right. Um, welcome back, Maureen Archer, to this show called Access to Perspectives Conversations. It's great, it's great, a great honor to have you here again. Oh, it's fantastic to be returning. Yes, I appreciate it. Cool. So um, for those who, of you who don't know Maureen, um, she's a dear colleague of mine. We've also co-facilitated workshops together in the past and might be doing so in the future as well. Um, so stay tuned for any announcements in that direction. You are, um, Maureen, you are also um, as you're serving researchers like myself, we are um, who struggle with um, scientific writing, scholarly writing at large. You've had a fair share of experience and expertise sharing with researchers when it comes to fine tuning the English language, particularly if it's not the first language. Um, in this show we've had, since we spoke, we had a couple of episodes um, covering on the importance also of multilingualism and the importance of knowing a language well enough to be able to, to transmit information embedded in, in this case, the English language, so that um, the readers or listeners for uh, an audience in, in person or on Zoom or wherever, like where you present um, orally, um, so that the recipients of the information can actually understand and process the information as intended by the person who delivers it, like the presenting researcher. Um, and today, um, we agreed that we focus a little bit on, or very much so, um, on presentation techniques and common mistakes to be avoided, along with suggestions and tips and tricks on how to do better, isn't it? So let's dive right in. So what? Yeah, let's let's just get started. The floor is yours. Sure, sure. Yes. The um, yeah, I've had the pleasure of working with hundreds of scientists over the past. Oh, that's since I was in grad school. It's been over thirty years now that I've been able to to help both as a professor of linguistics, as well as. Uh, um, consultant and trainer in my business called Professional English. And English as a second or foreign language is my specialty. So I've been able to work with some of the brightest minds uh, from around the world, over 50 countries. So it's been fantastic. And over those years and with that variety of clientele, I've really noticed a pattern of some of the most I would say um, um, important um, mistakes just to avoid. And so that's what I'd like to share with your listeners today because just some simple tricks, some simple tips, to the things to keep in mind can make a huge difference mm -hmm. when you're they're trying to present their information orally, be it um, conference talk, um, teaching, any aspect where they're uh, presenting their material orally can be very instructive. So mm -hmm. if you like, I just jump into the first one. Yes, <laughs> please, let's go. Yes. Yes, uh, the first one is putting too much information into one presentation. I have seen uh, wonderful research that just gets a bit lost if it's trying to be compact into, let's say, a pre 20 minute presentation. It often comes down to the best thing to think of what is the purpose of the presentation? What are you really trying to convey? Oftentimes, if you're trying to put too much information into one presentation, it's best to break it out into multiple presentations. And that can even be beneficial for one's career, so that you don't want to get everything in one presentation. It would be better even just for your um, publication and presentation portfolio to have it in multiple uh, mm. talks. So who is your audience, you know, and what is it that you want them leaving understanding? If you can write down your purpose in one sentence, it's a very nice guiding um, sentence to um, help you know, really focus on what is it that you want your audience to leave understanding. I have to say that I need to plead guilty on this one. And not only as a researcher, but also as an entrepreneur on my role as providing or giving workshops on a particular topic. 
because mm -hmm. I always have a level, uh, an urge of sharing as much information as I think the audience would need and appreciate. And then only realizing that the feedback is often then, oh, it's not well structured or um, the, the feedback was never, there was too much information, but people are not able to process all of that information that you put into a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, as you were, as you were saying that, yeah, as you were saying that, I was thinking that it reminds me of serving a meal. You know, if you serve someone a meal, you don't want to give them too much food because then they won't be able to eat it or it will even be bad for them or they will, you know, it would be just too overwhelming. Mm. So what is, and also during a presentation, your audience is not going to memorize everything. So what are some key items that you want them to leave understanding? Um, so yeah, that, that idea of saving some for later for other presentations and um, really clarifying what is it that you want to highlight for that particular presentation well, based upon who your audience is. Exactly. Yeah. I think the, the comparison with food uh, or a meal, like with a, is it a pre-course, the main dish and then a dessert? So which also correlates with a good structure, what's the introduction uh -huh. context, what's the main but with <laughs> one piece yeah. of information you actually want to convey to the audience. And yeah. then the dessert would be then maybe a little bit of storytelling and contextualizing again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, um, and yeah. we cannot solve the world in one day or we cannot we cannot possibly, or nobody's asking us to, to to condense five years of research into into 20 minutes presentation, you have to select and what's important for the audience to to know at this point for this mm -hmm. purpose, for what they came for to hear mm -hmm. and not what have you done like each and every minute throughout your past five years. Yes, and what is the purpose? Is the purpose to show how the results of your research can be applied in a certain mm -hmm. area? If that's the case, then that's what should be the main focus. Not all of your methodology or all of the background or, you know, because it's just too many details. So to give a few details, but then of the earlier items, but then really focus on, you know, the applicability, you know, if that is the purpose. Brilliant. Okay. That makes sense. Totally buy-in. Okay. So what's the best practice instead? Oh, we said that. So choose yeah. one. Or a maximum of three? Is three also still a good number? I don't know. Three, um, three right. I, I would say to focus on the purpose. What is your purpose of that presentation? What do you want your audience to leave understanding uh, realistically? <laughs> so, okay. And yeah. then the number of take-home messages will crystallize from there. Right, right. And you're right. It should not be more than three. It's very nice just to have one strong singular mm -hmm. purpose as opposed to maybe two or three. Yeah. But depending on the length of the presentation, if it's one hour, maybe three. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it's 20 minutes, yeah, maybe one. Cool, okay. Very nice, very nice. And the second mistake to avoid is putting too much information on one PowerPoint slide. Mm -hmm. And um, I understand the urge to do that oftentimes people will try to pack everything they want to say onto one slide. And that becomes their speaker's notes. Mm. And that becomes a problem because anything you put on a slide can be asked. You know, the audience can say, oh wait, I see that number up here, tell me about that. Well, it's not really what you wanted to highlight or spend mm. time on. So it's much better to have leaner slides that then you can talk the details of instead of having everything on the slide. It should be as clean as possible and um, uh, then to, to speak the details because the focus should really be on the presenter and not on the slide. Mm. Um, and oftentimes too, if we try to put too much information on a slide, it becomes too small and then people can't see it and then it just becomes frustrating. So. Yeah. And then they try to deliver and they're not listening anymore. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, actually, it's a brilliant um, insight is that we can only do one 
we can have only have one focus at a time. We can either be listening or we can be reading the mm -hmm. slide. So if you put a lot of text up on a slide, there will be some people who will read it through and not listen to what you are saying if you're saying something different, or they will listen and they won't read, or they'll go back and forth. And it's it's much better to control the focus of the audience. Mm. So do you want them listening to you or do you want them looking at the slide? Yeah, um, the, I think there's also a common um, tip. I don't know how common it really is, I would say at first, but it reminds me of the billboard rule which I often share in my courses, um, which means that if you're visual or if you remember a billboard on the road, um, you know, when you, that you can actually capture as you drive past in a reasonably mm -hmm. fast car, not mm -hmm. mentioning any brand empty brands here, but <laughs> so the billboard rule says you should be able to capture the information that's written or visualized on the billboard within, within and in less than three seconds. The one, two, I three. love that rule for poster presentations because with poster presentations, if you're in a, let's say if you're in a conference that has, you know, a side room that has all kinds of poster presentations mm -hmm. happening, it's very nice to have different levels of glancing. So you have the headline that people mm -hmm. can just read from a distance. And then if they get a little closer, you may have your sub um, uh, ideas, the different places, but have the, um, font big enough so that people can read it from maybe yeah. 10 feet away so they can get you know glean things and then if they come closer they can read um, more so yeah. that's a really nice um, strategy for posters as well yeah and then applied to the to the slides of a presentation it makes as ensures that you will only put so few words on it memorizing okay people actually expected to read this within two seconds so I can only put a maximum of 10 words on a slide or maybe 12 mm -hmm. and that's it. Yeah, oh, and it, it's much better to have um, non-text visuals mm -hmm. if you can, yeah. Or maybe mm -hmm. just have your chart or your graph and talk it instead mm -hmm. of trying to put all of the, the text to explain it because you are the one explaining it. So. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's very nice. And there's some amazing books out there um, death by PowerPoint is one that comes to mind. Oh, you know, goodness, yeah. 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 Okay. There's, there's a nice variety out there. Um, a bit morbid is uh, the title. But the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I always think, oh yeah. Bullet points. Get it. Ah, ha, ha. Yeah. Death by part. No. It's... <laughs> and then one more thing you said that some people might be tempted to put too much text on a slide to be able to memorize what they wanted to say. Um, I would argue, I agree with you, and I would argue you still need to practice. So to know what you want to say actually by heart, you should not let go of that um, I don't know, idea. Mm -hmm. Because the, the slide should only underline what you're actually saying. The pe people came to hear you and not to, to read an article. They could have done that at home. Exactly. Oh, I really like that. Yes. And um, yeah, it's what is the benefit of attending a presentation as opposed to just reading an article? Mm. Yeah, the presentation, you really get the energy and the insight from the researcher, him or herself, and you have the ability to ask questions. Yeah, first so, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh. But what you just said is a very nice lead into my third Mm -hmm. mistake. Yeah. The third mistake is not preparing materially, mentally, and physically in advance. Wait and a wait a minute. Okay. Physically too. Yeah. Physically. Yeah. This, this is one that's not often taught. So mm -hmm. let's start with materially first, What you referenced was really knowing your material, mm -hmm. being very comfortable with it. Even sometimes, especially, oh, I've seen this in the, the corporate organizational world a lot mm -hmm. is where people are handed presentations by, let's say, you know, someone up the uh, chain of command and said, here, go present this. Well, you still need to really understand it and, and um, to, to practice, but to read your slides, prepare your presentation aloud, you know, not just in your head, mm -hmm. but actually saying it and timing yourself and understanding that, especially if you are on a 
panel with multiple presenters that you, if you're, especially if you're, let's say the third or fourth in a panel and suddenly instead of 20 minutes, you have 10 minutes because the people before you have taken too much time mm -hmm. and prepare to say, okay, if that happens, what do I really need to focus on? Mm -hmm. You know, which slides can I let go of or can I minimize? And just practicing that flexibility because you never know what might happen. So, yeah, so to prepare uh, materially to understand and to um, go through and to make sure um, you don't have any tongue twisters, you know, in your presentation. Yeah, try, try to, to do that. Uh, can also you say to one now that we mention it? Do you have an What's example that? of a tongue twister? Oh, yes. Tongue twisters. Uh, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. Uh, she sells she seashells by the seashore. <laughs> yeah. so, I, I know that with Sally. Sally's, but it also works with she. It's actually more difficult. I'm not going to try. I'm not wasting yeah, any yeah. time. No, 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 no. But oftentimes there are words that you will have to pronounce that are difficult. Like inter interoperability, you know, yeah, oh, some, some words that are just multisyllabic that, you know, are good to kind of warm up. Uh, to prepare mentally means to get yourself in a positive frame of mind, to, you know, have positive affirmations, encouragement, try to get any negativity out of your mind because people are showing up to hear what you have to say, they are interested. So, um, so to prepare mentally, I also, um, I do this, I, any presentation that I make, I think of myself as a teacher, not in a derogatory way, but just the fact that these are people who want the information I have to present. Yeah. So my, my goal is to give them this information in the best and clearest manner possible. Mm. And they have friends. They come with a friendly attitude. They might be hungry if it's the last talk before lunch, but otherwise, they're <laughs> <to learn. laughs> yeah. but keep that in mind. Yes, yes, <laughs> great. And then physically is to warm up your instrument, your mouth. Oh yeah, yeah. So to stretch, you know, I usually stretch up, stretch out. I like to do some tongue twisters. Uh, I don't know if you know the uh, Mary Poppins movie, but there's supercalifragilisticexpialidocious is this uh -huh. big word that it. she says. So anytime, even before doing any kind of talk, I will do these um, physical warming up. Also, another good thing is to do some deep breathing. I do this especially right before it's my turn to speak. Mm -hmm. Just quietly take three deep breaths as I'm listening to the person who's speaking before me because not only does it help relax, but it gets oxygen to the brain, which is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh my what God. We who doesn't yeah. need breaths? Yeah, who doesn't need some oxygen? Our brain and oxygen. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, so a little bit of physical as well preparation. Mm -hmm. So those are those are the three really nice areas to think yeah. about. Could I add the power pose? Like I oh, love yeah. how you stress the like the jaw mus muscles and like the, the actual apparatus to convey the information through oral presen mm -hmm. presenting. Mm -hmm. But then like also to gain confidence to stretch the spine to build a posture in front of the audience to also take ourselves seriously and be taken seriously by the audience mm -hmm. instead of crunching and so oh, I'm so scared of people. Um, I love the mode, but then by taking in a power pose, Amy Chad, I think is the researcher said talk about it. We can link that also to the show notes. Yes. Um, so yeah. Oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah, just as you stand up to present, stand up tall yeah be your tallest most confident self <laughs> it reminds me of the silly phrase but it does work say fake it till you make it oh yeah oh, I love so it. even if you don't feel confident have that confident pose stand up straight put your shoulders back a little bit look mm -hmm. people in the eye even if you're terrified but just you know yeah. do that bit of acting and it's amazing how it will actually affect you yeah, I have another favorite TED talk. I think it's what TED Ed, TED Education, where they had an educative movie about the fight or flight reaction where with actual scientific evidence, like it's it's normal, it's expected, expect to be scared. 
to either fight or flight. Your usual reaction is to flight. Who wants to die in victory? Like that's one point. So our body is calling for flight when we are about to present. Right. <laughs> yes. Um and that's a it's a physical reaction because we're exposing ourselves. It's a potential threat, even if rationally we know this is not a threat, people are here to learn from me. But the body thinks, oh my god, what are you doing to me? To us. Yeah. 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 Um, We're stepping out of the pack and into view. Yeah. yeah. And it's an exposure. But if you think the fact that you are doing it for the benefit of those who are attending, yeah. you know. So I, I love the idea of focusing on the audience instead of focusing on yourself. What are you giving them? You're giving them this information. They want to receive this information. Therefore, your focus is on them. It's not mm -hmm. on yourself. And most people um, are not focusing on you really anyway. They kind of, they see you, but they're focusing on themselves because we're yeah. naturally self-focusing. And that gave me great comfort when mm. I learned it, I thought, yeah, they're not even, they don't really care about what I look like or, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they want to know what I can tell them that will help them. Mm. So they don't yeah, care exactly. what jacket I'm wearing or what my hair looks like. They don't really care. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And if I do that in the wrong conference, because they actually came, they signed up for the content and we're here to deliver the content. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Yes. And, um, also, a side note for that is expect to make performance errors. We all make errors as we speak. So we're going to slip up on a certain word or we're going to search for a word that we didn't have at the tip of our tongue. And, and it's going to, and that's normal. If you see a true transcript, there'll be a bunch of ums and uhs and, and this, even though we're not saying them that often, they will still come in a little bit. Mm. So to be realistic with yourself, not expect perfection because there's no such thing as a perfect talk. It is just you expect the performance errors. Mm. And yeah, I would like to add also, let's allow ourselves to be humans. We are not robots. <laughs> Nobody signed up to listen to a robot. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Yes. Yes. That's that's and very true. Imperfection is human. 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 Like yes. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Which is fine. All right. Would you like number four? Yes, please. Okay. This the number four and five. Uh, these are mistakes that happen during the presentation itself. And um, number four is failing to give transitions to keep the audience connected and focused. Uh, what normally, and I don't have anything to back this up, but I have read somewhere that we tend to have about 25% efficiency rate with listening. Mm -hmm. That just means that we, we focus on what we hear and then uh, we drift off, we come back and we drift yeah. off, we come back and we drift off. And we've all experienced that when we've been in presentations. We're like, oh, wow, I was thinking about lunch. But no, 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 I need to focus on what's being said here. I'm so glad you mentioned that there's actually scientific evidence. I'll try and find it for you guys who are listening. Yes, please. Um, because like as many of these things, unless we talk about it, it's also happening to me. And I thought I was the only one. It's like, oh, am I the only one in the whole audience who cannot concentrate on this really exciting and interesting talk? It's <laughs> yeah. kind of human. <laughs> It is very, and, and just think about the, those who have had little sleep, those who are distracted by something that's going on in their lives, they have probably even more difficulty focusing on what you're saying. So as you, as the presenter, you realize that that is the reality, you know, you we're dealing with human beasts who, you know, have, have this challenge. And so as, as we, especially as we tr transition from one side to the next, it's good to both orally introduce it as well as have headings on your slides that tell the um, audience where we are in the presentation. Mm -hmm. you know, what is the topic of the slide we're looking at? So if I'm transitioning, I might say, and um, now I'm going to talk about the methodologies for mm -hmm. this particular um, research. And um, so then I have the methodology slide and mm -hmm. also, when you do that, it tends to bring people in. Oh, we're going on to something new. 
yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Now I hear this. Mm -hmm. So just the simple act of having transitions between each of the slides will keep your audience with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you give workshops, like if you were asked to measure, which I'm doing now, like what's the percentage of like highlighting, please add a transition to your slides because it's missing in a practice talk. Mm -hmm. Like, is this commonly, well, it's a common mistake that we, like one of the common mistakes. So you see that quite often that. Oh yes, yeah. very common. Excellent. It's, I think it's most common because you as a presenter know what's coming next. So you just present it as opposed to introducing it. And the, mm -hmm. the nice part about introducing is you're creating that cognitive space for your audience to put that information in their heads. Mm -hmm. So you're preparing them. And so you're preparing them for the new bit of information that's coming along. And they're much more likely to not only be focused, but uh, retain it better and, um, you know, be able to process it. So it's it's very helpful to, um, on so many levels, uh, to do that. Um, instead of just one slide after the next slide, after the next slide, after the next slide, and we're not sure where you are. In the yeah, oh, okay, good to know. Um, yeah. In my scientific writing courses, I, I often, not always, most often, I use the title, scientific writing from a reader's perspective. And to, to be honest, between you and I, as if nobody else was listening, I haven't thought about the same approach for presenting. I mean, it's kind of in intrinsic as we practice, but this is why we practice. We want to put ourselves in the audience's shoes to help them being able to follow our presentation and not coming from a presenter's approach. Well, that's uh, regular, but actually doing the mind shift of how are the somebody in the audience receive the information I'm trying to convey. Exactly. It is the very foundation of everything I teach about communication mm -hmm. is communication oh. is not about you. It's about what the, your, the receiver, you know, who is it? Because let's say you're making a presentation to fellow experts in your field. You know, you're going to present something one way. If you're presenting it to fifth graders, you're going to present it a different way. If you're presenting it to people who are interested but don't know any of the technical terminology, you should really present it a different way. Yeah, and so it's that idea of packaging everything for the audience. Yeah, it's it's so crucial. Yeah. It is, and now that we talk about it, it's so obvious and it's so easily forgotten because we make it about us and not the topic, but it's actually about the recipients. It's about the recipient because you already know the information. So, yeah, <laughs> if you're just if you're just presenting for yourself, you're really wasting your time because you already know it. <laughs> and everybody else is true. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's uh, sometimes the most profound or the most simple. Mm. So, yeah, I really like that. Um, oh, this also goes to the fifth and final um, uh, common mistake, I would say, and that is speaking too quickly and this this happens so often and it's so important to slow down mm -hmm. it probably feels sometimes for example if you're speaking at the at the pace that i'm speaking right now it might feel a bit slow as you're doing it however there may be people in the audience who are adjusting their ear to your accent they may be those who are just adjusting to, oh, wow, now I got to function in English again, <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, um, or, oh, what was that word, you know, and so just saying it slowly really helps people process it. Mm -hmm. And what, if you speak too quickly and people start um, not being able to comprehend you, then all is lost. Sure. So, oh, and the other reason to speak more slowly is because you will see that the more professional speakers do that. They speak more slowly because it tends to command focus. It's like, ooh, this person is relaxed. They're in control. They're speaking at a pace that's not too fast. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes, if we're nervous, then we start talk to you know talk too quickly, and then we can't get it out, and we're just yeah. the adrenaline is going, and ah, nah, nah. and so we tend to race because we're um, nervous. So okay. if we slow down, it's that idea of standing tall and confident. 
Mm -hmm. Just try speaking a little more slowly as well. You'll be amazed at how people tend to focus a bit more. Beautiful. I also hadn't seen that from this angle. Thank you. Yeah. Like yeah. Speaking slowly is a matter of, should I say, authority or it, yes. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it expresses control and mm -hmm. security, also in a sense. So people feel secure to listen and mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay. yeah it's and it gives you that chance to really look for the words that you want to say as well and so it also allows you to emphasize what you want to emphasize and as you practice it's actually not a bad idea to record your speech and listen and to see, am I talking too quickly at times or how is how is it sounding from an outside perspective? Okay, here's a suggestion because I have a few friends and colleagues who speak really fast. I think I can sometimes also do the same. And now with these digital devices that we all carry in our suitcases and um, pockets, there's often a feature where you can not only double speed, a recording but also slow down a recording and how funny is that to self-record and then increase or decrease the speed of our own voice and listen to ourselves and see mm -hmm. what that, what effect that has to us. <laughs> interesting yeah. yeah it's very very interesting mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but i would say even the ted talks that you referenced notice how slowly they often speak right yeah it's very yeah. interesting and these are considered like fine tuned and over sometimes over polished and super polished <laughs> presentation modes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. Right. Yeah, they, they are often coached so that they will be able to present, you know, the most confidently. Mm. So and it's and it's difficult when that adrenaline is running, but to take those three deep deep breaths, remind yourself to stand tall and slow down. Wow, it just has an amazing effect. Brilliant. Okay, so in summary, would you mind to repeat all five and then the two of us come up with best practices instead? So don't do this. Instead, try that. Okay. All right. So the first one is don't put too much information into a single presentation. Mm -hmm. So instead, think of what the primary purpose is of uh, that you want in that single presentation. And then also think if you have a lot of data that that should be um, parsed into different presentations. Right. So less is more. Less is more. Often less is more. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then second one is uh, to avoid putting too much information onto one PowerPoint slide. Mm -hmm. So kind of the same, less is more. <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. And like, um, so the people in the audience can only either listen or read. Exactly. So if we put too much text, they will read, they cannot listen. So whatever you say will be lost to at least, I don't know, 20, 30, 50, 70% of the audience. I mean, want to avoid Well, oh, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. They can only focus on one thing. Yeah. They can listen or they can read. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And then uh, failing to prepare materially, mentally, and physically. So I think the advice would be to take the time needed to prepare effectively. Yeah. yeah. To practice it, to um, have that you know, positivity, to know that the, you are there for your audience to convey the information they want and to warm up your instrument and to breathe deeply. Mm. Yeah, nothing to add. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Number four, failing to give transitions to keep your audience connected. So to both orally as well as on the slide, have a header that tells your audience where you are in the presentation but to um, help them, bring them back in from their, um, wherever their brain is at the moment, to help prepare them for the next slide by introducing it. Mm -hmm. And it's just simple. Yeah. Yeah. On the next slide, I'll show blah, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. 
Good. And the last one is not to speak too quickly, but basically to slow down, really enunciate and um, you know, have that command of um, what you're saying. Enunciate. I might have seen it before as I'm also teaching presentation techniques. But mm -hmm. for those who don't know the English language so well, mm -hmm. what does enunciate mean? It's basically about pronunciation, uh, but in a different way. Yeah. Uh, basically being clear about your pronunciation, really focusing mm -hmm. on clarity of the vowels, the consonants. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember where I saw it. Yeah. Hey. And then that, that happens if you're if you slow down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very good. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing that. You mentioned death by PowerPoint. Is there maybe one or two mm -hmm. other references that mm -hmm. we can add to the reference list for further reading? Uh, what I can do is let me pull up some and I can share those with you and you can maybe put some mm -hmm. links um, in for the podcast. That would be fantastic. Okay. Yeah, there's so much good advice, but this especially is for those scientists that I've helped over the years. These yeah. are some patterns that I thought would really help your listeners today. So cherry-picked references will be added, and there is not an exclusive list, or not an exhaustive list, rather. It's a very exclusive list, <laughs> exclusively selected by the <laughs> for you, or exclusively for you, selected by um and for you listener um thanks for listening and um if you have any questions please um yeah write in the comments or send us a, an email you can as always also reach out to maureen for mm -hmm. further advice um we are also here to service if you have colleagues or group a research group who would like to Pep up their presentation skills. We're ready to to be at your service. Um, yeah, and what else is there to add? Um, we'll link all your contact details so people can reach out to you directly. And thank you so much for sharing this. I think it's it's vital advice. I learned something new again. Oh, I'm so you glad. <laughs> yeah. never know so glad to share the experience yes and i and i have and please share these insights with your colleagues as well mm -hmm. oh, well yeah very nice well thank you joe it's been a pleasure yeah so again um likewise and yeah speak soon whenever yeah well there's always something to share but whenever opportunity comes again thank yeah. you so prepare much. and be confident yes oh well <laughs> Very good. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.